Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over user code 2017. Um, this is going to be the open contest bronze problem one, and it's the lost cow. So Farmer John has lost his prize cow Bessie and needs to find her. And there is one long path running across the farm, and basically you can think of it as a number line, right? That's going to be pretty important later on. And Farmer John is at position X and Bessie is at position Y. If only Farmer John knew where Bessie was, then he would just be able to walk a straight line to Bessie. However, it's dark outside, Farmer John can't see anything, and the only way to find Bessie is to walk back and forth until he eventually reaches Bessie. So, uh, Farmer John uh, tries to find the best way to find Bessie, and he consults a computer science research literature and realizes that there is an exact same problem that's been studied by computer scientists and is called the lost cow problem. So the recommended solution is to, uh, to find Bessie is to move plus one and then minus two and plus four and so on. So um, from his original position, you're going one forward and then you're going two back from his original position, not the new position. And then you're going plus four from his original position in a zigzag pattern and so on. Right, so you're just moving um, twice as far from the initial starting point, and at worst, you will, uh, he will travel nine times the direct distance x minus y. And so, uh, Farmer John wants to verify the result, and you're given x and y, and compute the total distance he will travel according to the zigzag strategy. So, basically, we're given uh, two integers as input x and y, Farmer John's location on the number line and Bessie's location on the number line and you're given a constraint here as well and after that uh, you just need to print out one line of output containing the distance Farmer John will have to travel to reach Bessie obviously using the zigzag method um, so that would be 9 here in this case so let's actually take a look at the um, number line and try to visualize the problem okay so as you can see here I've actually sketched out the number line that um, was being discussed in the problem. So first we go x plus 1, right? So we go one um, unit away from the starting position and we still haven't found Bessie. So we go minus 2, right? So every time we, um, we I guess every time we just switch directions. So we did plus 1, now we're going to do minus 2, right? So we're going to go from here to x minus 2, which is 1, right? Because 3 minus 2 is 1. So we're going to go here. And then we're gonna, it's, we still haven't found Bessie, right, while we were traveling like this. And so we're going to go to x plus four, right? So we're gonna go all the way from here to x plus four, and we crossed by Bessie. So now we know that Bessie is in this position. And so we're just gonna tally up the, um, I guess the distance that we traveled. So that's plus one. And then we also traveled three here. And then we traveled six here, but, um, we don't count this one because basically Bessie is at six, she's not at seven. So just know that um, basically we're just traveling from x plus one to x minus two to x plus four to x minus eight, x plus 16, and so on, right? Um, but we're traveling to the original x's um, plus two, you know, minus four, plus eight, so on. We're traveling to the original, um, that those um, plus and minus positions that are, I guess, um, in, in accordance with the original position, not the new position. So for example, right, um, if we did plus one here, we're not going to go back to from four, right? We're going to go back to from three because three is the original position. Same thing here. Um, since we did a plus one and a minus two, right, we're not going to go plus four. So we're not going to go to five, right? We're going to go plus four from three not the new position one. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know to create the uh, to create a program. So let's go ahead and start programming. So as you can see, I already have some code written out. So I just have our um, buffered writer, print writer, that being set up, right? Helping with the input and output. I close those later on and I call the initialize and solve methods. And in the initialize method, I um, take in our x and y, right, which is Farmer John and Bessie's position, and they are static variables that are written here. And in the solve method, I'm going to actually um, solve the problem here. So let's get started. So with the, um, 
the variables that we need to make first for the solve method. Uh, the first one would be walk, right? So I'm going to make, make a variable called walk and set it equal to one. This variable is just basically going to uh, measure how much distance Farmer John is going to be walking every time he does the zigzag, right? So it starts at plus one, and then it would be minus two, and then so on. Um, and then what we're going to do is make um, total dist, so total distance. And then we're going to set that to zero for now, just because we haven't done anything yet. And then we're going to make the original variable, which is equal to x. That's just going to hold the um, original value of x. And finally, we're going to make the old position variable. And that's just going to hold the old position um, of x every time we move and do the zigzag method. Uh, and yeah, so for this uh, program, we're actually just going to create a while loop that runs indefinitely. And we're going to obviously break it later on. But uh, the reason for doing this is just because um, I mean, there's no actual, there's no like good way to incorporate a for loop, right? Uh, you're gonna have to break it regardless, and so it's just uh, better to keep it keep things simple. And so we have a while loop here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the old position to x. So each time this um, this runs, we're gonna set the old position to x before we do anything to x, and then um, we're gonna set the x to original. So um, basically, in if you remember how I did the number line, right? Before you go to a new position in the zigzag, you will always uh, run back to Farmer John's original position. Okay, so say like he goes to position four and then has to go to position one. When he goes from four to one, he has to go to the original position. So instead of making things complicated, um, we're just going to measure the distance that it takes to go from the um, position A to the original position. And then we're going to calculate uh, the amount it takes to go from the original position to position B, right? And so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do uh, x equals original, right? And then we're going to do x plus equals walk, right? So to get to position B, and then we're going to calculate uh, the we're going to calculate the next walk, which is just walk times equals negative two. And so uh, by doing walk times equals uh, negative two we're going to uh, be able to just uh, determine what the, the next zigzag will be. So it's plus 1, minus 2, plus 4, minus 8, and so on, right? So the, um, doing this helps us determine that. And next, we're going to uh, do total distance um, plus equals math.abs x minus old position, right? And basically what this does for our uh, program is it's just going to calculate the distance it took for, to go from position A to the original position all the way to position B in one move, right? And um, how it does this is basically uh, we have so we're just taking the absolute value of the distance between uh, position A and position B, right? And you might be wondering why we did this in the first place then, and that's just because it makes it much easier to go from the original position. Remember how I said everything is anchored from the original position? Like if you do plus one, it's from the original position, minus two, or original position, and so on. And so we'll just set our location to the original position before doing the zigzag method. And that just makes it a lot easier on us. We don't have to take into account like position A first and then how far is it from position B. No, we just set it equal to the original position and then we move from there. And then we can calculate the distance uh, easily like this. And so that's um, the majority of our code. The final part is just going to be um, checking when the, I guess, when Farmer John hits Bessie. And so we need to first check um, whether Bessie is between Farmer John's old position and his new position. So in order to do that, we need an if statement and first, it's going to check um, if Bessie is between the old position and, um, and the new position, with the old position being before the new position. So it would be old position is less than or equal to y, and y is less than or equal to x. And then we're going to do the opposite, uh, which is x is less than or equal to y, and y is less than or equal to old position. Okay. And finally, um, right, if we did pass by Bessie, 
what we're going to do is just total distance is going to be uh, plus equals and then we're going to do y my uh, math abs and then y minus old position so this will just help us determine um, the instead of going all the way to the new position we're just going to go to Bessie's position and we're going to calculate the distance between Bessie's position and the old position, right? And you might be confused as to why I did this between, um, between this line and this line and not after. Well, it's because um, after we find Bessie, we break, right? But if we did this before, then we would basically be calculating um, the distance between the new position and the old position, right? Adding that to our total distance. And then adding that, um, and then adding the Bessie's position minus the old position as well. So it'd basically be adding uh, more than more distance than we need, right? So we only do this if we haven't hit Bessie yet, okay? And finally, all we have to do is just uh, print out our output. So that would just be the total distance. And now that we've done that, we're ready to submit. And as you can see, um, it passes all the test cases. So that's the lost cow problem. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.